Welcome back to NQIS Steve and as promised we're going to start going through the Achilles Plus firmware. This one's on the menu system. So when we turn it on we get the splash screen and it goes to the home screen. On the home screen it shows you the two diversity receivers or the two receivers A and B and also show you the channel frequency you're on with some other little information that scrolls past, as you can see. Then we get on to favorites. And in favorites, when you press on the menu wheel, you can see what favorites you actually have saved. And you can see here that I have 5805, which is A4, and I have 5752, which is B2. These are two of the crafts that I fly. All right, so the next menu along was Ultra Search. Ultra search is what you use to search for your signal if you don't know it. And once you've found that signal, you can leave it as is and just fly, or you can actually save it as a favorite. So we'll go through that here. And what you do is you press in the menu button, which is the wheel, give it a short press. And when you give it a short press, you have this second menu come up and you go to save and give a short press to the menu wheel again. And that's how easy it is to save a favorite. Okay, so this screen is events. In events, you can have up to six pilots flying and you can find each of the channels that they're broadcasting on. And then it'll just be a matter of flicking the wheel each time, down or up and cycling through each channel. In this screen, you could also give a short press and, oh sorry, a long press and you would be into favorites and you could save it. Okay, the next one along is fast mode. Now fast mode is just a manual search mode, but instead of just clicking down through the wheel like I was doing there, you can hold the wheel down and it will travel fast along the frequency bands. So that's straightforward enough. Okay, so our next one along the menu line after fast mode is band scan. And band scan is just that as well. It's a band, a, a band scanner. Uh, I have nothing plugged in, so I'll just quickly plug a unit in, which is a little RX again, a little uh, RX95 from Echin. Once I plug it in, it gives an awful signal. First time that I ever realized how bad this signal spread was. But she is in on R3. Now, if you pull the wheel up while you're in this screen, instead of down, you'll go from having the best to deep. And what deep is, it's just showing you a much uh, zoomed in section of the band scan. Okay, so that's the band scanner. Next along the list is model find. Now this is a great application. I'll just plug in the unit again and boom, because she's sitting right next to me on the bench, it's showing a hundred percent. But as I cover the antenna, and I was only covering one of the antennas because it's off the B antenna. And each time I covered it with the unit sitting beside me, you can see how it goes up and down, giving you the power. And that's me just shaking the quad around. So it is quite sensitive. And if you're within a few meters, you can definitely find your model. It worked quite well. Okay, so the next one that we come to is the settings. Now settings is a very full menu, there's uh, two pages of it. And you can see they've got the filter, normal RSSI checks, your call sign, calibrate, and alarm off. Then you can just jump over the next screen and it's flip screen, so you can turn the screen around. OSD, that's right, the OSD, and whether it is PAL or NTCS, NTSC, and save and exit once you've done it. Now factory reset is the part you go on to when you first flashed and it will automatically go into calibrate. Now that alarm there that is off, that is for RSSI alarm. 
So if your signal goes low, you can have a 10% lower, 20% lower, or 30% lower. Okay, so we're back to the main screen. Now, if we were to flick the other way, instead of flicking down, I'm going to flick up, we'll go for the next couple of screens. We'll go past manual search to ultra search. Now, ultra search is where you would normally head to find your model's channel if you didn't know the channel off the top of your head. And in here, it's quite simple to go into favorites and save it once you've found your channel. Okay, so manual search. In here, this is just a, you pull down on the menu wheel and you will go from channel to channel. You can see there it's going all the way down the list and it's quite laborious, but it's how you can slowly go through each channel and find either yours or somebody else's if you wished. Okay, so we'll go into Curve Ross. Now, Curve Ross is interesting. What Curve Ross does is just once you've pressed it, you go back and do it again, you press it and you're automatically into Curve Ross. So you escape, let the menu time out, and here we are. So this is the screen you would be sitting on in Curve Ross. And you can see that it's got the two um, receivers. And the one on the right, which is the B receiver, it has one megahertz, in this case, less than the A receiver. And this is supposed to be a much more robust way of saving um, a channel, of uh, locking on to a channel. Um, yet to test this particular side of it to see if it's any better, but it does work. I know it does work and I could tell no real difference between this and UltraScan at the time. It just locked on and I was there. So out of Curve Ross, we'll have a look. I think it's the last thing we're going to look at here and it's the lap timer. Now, at this particular time, I didn't test the lap timer. Lap timer. I have since tested it and got it to work and switch on and off, not in a real world race scenario, but just flying up and down the park. And as it flew past me, it seen me the first time and then next time it stopped the timer and started a new lap and then so forth. And you can actually get, I think it's 12 laps. It's got a little countdown. And bing, you start flying. And then as you would fly past, you would, uh, it would count the time and you would be on to your next lap. Okay, guys, we'll, we'll leave it there. Um, I know that was a bit of an abrupt stop, but there is um, a lot more to investigate within the menu system as far as going into each of the, diff the different applications. Now, the main one that we should tackle next, I'm going to do a whole video on it, is the, the settings page. In the settings page, there is all sorts of things that we can have a look at, and that'll be the RSI, RSSI checks, the RSSI alarm that will let you know if you're going out of signal or before you go out of signal. Um, inside of the settings page, there's the calibrate area and we will investigate that because there is a right way and a wrong way to calibrate. And also the OSD. The OSD is in there and that's a whole other video, I believe, is the OSD section of it, because in that I should show you how that is set up actually with the hardware side of it, because there is a little bit of soldering to do, and it's quite easy if you've got a steady hand and you've got a small solder tip, but we'll show you that as well. Okay, so once again, I thank George, uh, aka uh, GC9N from RC Groups because he's the man behind Achilles. He's the guy who's done all the Brainiac work and put all this together. I was just lucky enough to be on his test crew and test this out before any of the others got hold of it. 
All right, guys, so if you've liked that part of the video, I appreciate it. Please press the like button. I keep forgetting to ask people to do that. And if you haven't subscribed and you like this sort of thing, please subscribe because then you'll get notifications of when I put up my videos. All right, so next one along the track is the settings inside of Achilles Plus. See you then.